The Indian Army has recently inducted 550 indigenously developed Osmi machine pistols into the Northern Command, which oversees operations in Ladakh and Jammu and Kashmir. This is the first batch of the 100% Indian-made weapon intended to equip special forces for close-quarter battles and specialized operations in India's northern theater. These pistols, designed primarily for close-quarter battles and specialized operations, mark a significant step in India's self-reliance initiative. The first batch of these 100% Indian-made weapons was developed by Colonel Prasad Bansad of the Indian Army in collaboration with the Defense Research and Development Organization, DRDO. Manufacturing is being handled by Lokesh Machines Limited in Hyderabad. The Osmi machine pistol is described as a compact, reliable weapon featuring a unique semi-bullpup design that enables single-handed operation. It functions as both a pistol and a submachine gun, making it highly versatile for the Army's special forces. The weapon boasts an 8-inch barrel and a 33-round magazine that fires 9mm ammunition and it is intended to enhance the Army's capabilities in the Northern Command's challenging operational terrain. The induction of the Osmi machine pistol aligns with the Indian Army's commitment to achieving self-sufficiency in defense manufacturing. In April, Lokesh Machines Limited was awarded the contract to supply these pistols, further supporting India's push for greater autonomy in defense production. Garden Reach Shipbuilders and Engineers Limited has marked a significant milestone in India's shipbuilding industry with the keel laying of two next-generation offshore patrol vessels for the Indian Navy. The ceremony, held on Tuesday, was attended by prominent figures including Dr. C. V. Ananda Bose, the Governor of West Bengal, and senior officials from various defense sectors. This development highlights a major leap in India's indigenous shipbuilding capabilities, GRSE known for its successful construction of offshore patrol vessels, OPVs, has previously delivered several such vessels, including India's first warship export, the OPV CGS Barracuda, to Mauritius in 2014. The next-generation offshore patrol vessels represent a significant upgrade, offering enhanced size, endurance, and firepower. These vessels will be 113 meters long, 14.6 meters wide, and have a displacement of 3,000 tons. With a top speed of 23 knots and an endurance of 8,500 nautical miles at 14 knots, they are capable of supporting a crew of 24 officers and over 100 sailors. The next-generation offshore patrol vessels are designed for diverse roles, such as coastal security, offshore asset protection, maritime interdiction, and surveillance. They are also equipped for specialized operations like mine warfare, anti-piracy, counter-infiltration, humanitarian assistance, and even functioning as hospital ships. Their shallow draft of 4 meters enables effective operations in coastal waters. Dr. C. V. Ananda Bose praised GRSE's achievement, recognizing it as a testament to India's growing global shipbuilding prowess. CMD PR Hari, the chairman and managing director of GRSE, highlighted the company's ongoing efforts, revealing that it is currently constructing 43 marine platforms, including warships and specialized vessels, and remains committed to technology-driven growth. India's Tejas Light Combat Aircraft Program, originally developed to meet the Indian Air Force's needs for an indigenous fighter jet, has also provided an opportunity to showcase Indian aerospace capabilities globally. However, India's first attempt to export the Tejas MK-1A encountered several challenges, including limited marketing efforts and tough international competition. This highlighted the need for a more strategic approach with the upcoming Tejas MK-2. Learning from the MK-1 as shortcomings, India aims to position the MK-2 as a cost-effective, modern fighter jet for countries seeking alternatives to expensive Western options. The Tejas MK-2, with significant upgrades over the MK-1A, is expected to be priced more competitively than Western jets, like the F-16 and Saab Gripen. To appeal to potential buyers, India plans to highlight the MK-2's cost-effectiveness, including low operational and maintenance expenses, emphasizing the MK-2's minimal reliance on foreign technology and high local content 
can also attract nations prioritizing sovereignty and defense. India could pursue partnerships for co-production with countries in Southeast Asia, the Middle East, and Africa, while collaborating with international defense companies for marketing and after-sales support. Setting up regional facilities for manufacturing, maintenance, and training could strengthen long-term partnerships. Additionally, offering flexible financing options, such as government-backed loans or leasing agreements, could make the MK2 more accessible to countries with budget constraints. To enhance the Tejas MK2's appeal, India can showcase the aircraft at international defense exhibitions, air shows, and combat exercises, providing tangible demonstrations of its capabilities. By learning from past marketing missteps, India can rebrand the MK2 as a reliable cost-effective solution, positioning it as a competitive option in the global defense market. The Indian Navy has set an ambitious goal to expand its fleet to over 200 ships by 2035, with nearly 90% of the components sourced domestically. This vision was outlined by Vice Admiral Rajesh Pendarkar, Flag Officer Commanding-in-Chief of the Eastern Naval Command, during his keynote address at the Weak Maritime Conclave 2024 in Chennai. He emphasized the Navy's commitment to achieving self-reliance by 2047 and noted the Navy's growth from just 35 ships at India's independence to around 130 ships today, organized into two fleets. This growth has been fueled by a focus on maritime security, anti-piracy operations, and collaborative missions with regional navies, especially after the 9 by 11 attacks. Vice Admiral Pendarkar also discussed India's evolving maritime strategy, which has shifted from a look east to an act east approach, broadening the Navy's operational reach to regions like the Gulf of Guinea, the Mediterranean, the Pacific and the Southern Oceans. He stressed the importance of the Navy in protecting India's maritime trade, with 95% of the country's trade by volume and 70% of its energy needs passing through the Indian Ocean. With India's ocean economy expected to exceed $1 trillion by 2025, the Navy is crucial to safeguarding trade routes, energy security, and economic growth. To achieve its expansion goals, the Vice Admiral highlighted the need to modernize India's shipbuilding industry and strengthen transshipment hubs. He also noted India's historical maritime strength, drawing connections to ancient texts that mention ships and trade, underscoring India's ongoing ambitions to reclaim its position as a leading maritime power. The Navy's planned growth reflects India's increasing focus on enhancing its maritime capabilities and self-reliance in defense. For the first time, a clear photograph of the side weapon bay on Russia's Su-57 has emerged, providing a detailed look at one of the most mysterious aspects of the country's fifth-generation fighter jet. The Su-57, designed for agility, advanced avionics and stealth, is Russia's response to aircraft like the F-22 and F-35, incorporating unique engineering solutions for air superiority and multirole capabilities. The image reveals the side weapon bay, a critical component for internal weapons storage, which helps maintain the aircraft's stealth profile. Unlike conventional fighter jets that often use external hardpoints, the Su-57's internal bays allow it to carry missiles and other ordnance without compromising its radar cross-section or RCS. The side bay is specifically designed for short-range air-to-air missiles, likely including advanced infrared-guided weapons, such as the R-73 or the newer Cape 74 m 2 this configuration supports the Su-57's focus on within visual range combat while ensuring stealth. The clear image confirms previous theories about the bay's layout and functionality. It suggests that the Su-57 integrates advanced targeting, sensor systems, and compact missile configurations to enhance maneuverability and combat readiness. The side bay's location allows for rapid missile deployment, which aligns with Russia's emphasis on agility in within visual range engagements. Additionally, the design helps reduce the aircraft's RCS, ensuring stealth during weapon deployment. While other fifth-generation aircraft, such as the F-22 and F-35, also use internal weapon bays to preserve stealth, the Su-57's dedicated side bay for short-range missiles highlights its focus on dogfighting and high maneuverability in close combat scenarios, 
reflecting Russia's combat doctrine. This design approach sets the Su-57 apart from other stealth fighters. That's all from YKS team for now. If you like the information, then please do share and give a like. You can also become our channel member and support our work. Thanks for watching.